Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading, and uh, today we're going to be going over the initial balance again, and just reviewing the last couple months of trade on a couple of the major currency pairs, and again just reviewing the importance of the first couple days of the month in relation to momentum and the possibility of capturing some strong moves at the beginning of the month, based on looking at the initial balance or the opening range. So we're just looking at the pound USD here. And again, if you've looked at some of the other videos with relation to the opening range, you can go back. The purpose of this is just to give you a little bit of insight into having a bit of opportunity to possibly position yourself in the direction or in a, in a, in a place where it's low risk, where the market is going to pick you up and move quickly. You're not predicting, but you're just getting in the path of where the smart money might be moving and then hanging on for the short term to capture some profitable low risk trades. <clears throat> so we've talked about timing in the past and timing uh, around the beginning of the month. And one of the things that we look at with this is the first couple bars. And I'm just going to highlight a couple of areas here so this dotted line that we look at here is the first bar of the month so we're just looking at the price action as we head into the last few days of the month and again we're just looking for some ideas of where the market might be heading uh, as it heads into the beginning of this month so 80 percent of the time roughly speaking the market uh, will set an upper or lower boundary extreme usually in the first couple of sessions of the month at least for the first half of the month and what we want to try and look at here is when we see this price action takes place we've got a very strong bull bar now we talked about the two types of bars in the other videos there's usually only two types of bars a doji or a trend bar a trend bar is one that opens at one end and closes at the other whether it's a bull bar or a candle or a bear bar a doji is one that usually opens in the middle third and closes in the middle third and it's the indi indicative of a trading range <clears throat> in this particular case we see a very strong bull bar breakout we'll just back that up a bit and we'll just bring this over a touch so again we just close that sorry we'll see in this particular case we see that the, the market has hit an area where we're looking at a range a range of trading I'll just try and get my lines here so we've got a trading range established the market breaks out it's, a, it's an out of balance candle the next day it pulls back but we still see that the market has stayed up in that upper range of those previous wicks now we want to position ourselves with momentum so if you're an early bear and you've taken a short position there up near the top of that first bars high most likely that's where your stop is now you're sitting in some degree of profit now the, the other thing to take note of here is that if you're short these other bear bars have most likely already been stopped out now if that's the case those bears there's a high probability that they might be now switching switching to bullish bullish positions and so you want to position yourself for that follow through momentum so the market's made a big move it's filled new orders it's taken a pause it's retested to see if there's any selling down in this area but as indicative of the buying tail there's more buyers willing to jump on that market and then boom we see that explode up now the difference as we get up top here is that we see that that bullish selling has now weakened but again, just looking at our first two bars of the month, up until the halfway point, we've got a buying extreme, which we see the market weekly retest. But again, just looking at that first couple of bars and where we can position ourselves in the early going to capture a move. Okay, so traders definitely would have been able to capture some profit up here. If we go on to the next month, we see that the market demonstrated two-sided selling towards the end of the month 
as we went into the beginning of the next month, the market broke out. Now, smart traders would position themselves where there's obvious stops placed. Aggressive traders may have got in and recognized that buying tail. Uh, and after a move like this, we see a measured move down, two legs down. Um, traders would be thinking that this is a uh, evidence of more selling. And, and technically what that is, is where traders have, a, it's, it's showing that there's more buyers willing to come into the market now. And they're coming in as the market goes higher. And what happens, we'll just bring this down. I'll try that again. What happens is that when we see this breakout, we know that if traders position themselves there to go long, their stop could be a low. Now aggressive traders may have positioned themselves right off the bat above that high, but then traders can either follow that trade up or look to get in somewhere out at a high. So again, just coming back to our original premise that 80% of the time, one of those first two bars will act as a possible buying or selling extreme. Now after we saw the market auction down into a second leg, so we had two legs down, we saw it explode up. So again, we go into the next month, we see a range bound market. Okay, the market gave us a potential high. The second day broke down and showed us indication of sellers coming in even lower. That's two days. Now, if that was a strong market, that market should have immediately came back above that high. So bears who were smart entered in early, the less aggressive bears would have went in on the inside bar. So again, the first two bars of the month setting a potential buying or selling extreme for that first half and in some cases the month. So if you look at your ATRs, the average true range, you're looking to see what that monthly ATR would have been for the pound. And when you're looking at the end of day trading, you're looking at positioning yourself into a trade for capturing possibly half of that ATR minimum. And you're risking one R or one, one candle, one, one ATR 20, whatever you're, you're comfortable risking. If it's by the technical bar on the chart, you're using position sizing based on your money management rules. And you're looking at at least a one to one, two to one, and in some cases, maybe, you know, three or four to one. So pay attention to that initial balance. We'll just look at another example here. Okay. We've got our first bar of the month. It immediately takes out the low of the previous month, which we know is that last candle. Second bar, lower high, lower low. Now, if 80% of the time the market has found a buying or selling extreme, we won't, and we're looking at this and we're seeing a fairly strong trend now establishing itself, we want to position ourselves to go with the break of that move after that second candle. Now again, we don't know, but again, all you're going to be risking, we'll just clean that out again. All you're going to be risking in that situation, let's back this up. When you get this situation, all you're ever going to be risking is that one bar. Okay, if you're going to sell it up here, that's fine, but you're only ever going to be risking one bar. If you shorted that bar, you're only risking one bar. So again, if you're going with a move and you're expecting that to happen, you need to be positioning yourself and where that trade would be invalidated based on your analysis. That's the maximum stop you're willing to take and the maximum position sizing in terms of your risk. You want to keep that within your risk parameters, manage the downside, but go back, look at those first two bars of the month, take a look at where traders may be getting in to capture some of these big strong pushes when the market opens. And you know, we've got new economic calendars coming out. We've got large funds and institutions closing their trades out at the end of the month and rolling into new ones. Uh, we've got options expiries. Uh, there's a whole host of things that could be potentially the 
the catalyst for these markets to move, but you're looking for price action to confirm it and then being able to position yourself for the market to pick you up when it makes that move with the lowest risk possible. Thanks traders. Hopefully you got some value out of that. As I said, study your charts, print off a whole bunch of charts, look at that initial balance, manage the downside. Didn't say it was easy, but I did say it was worth it. Thanks traders. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.